During what type of flying do fatal accidents occur in the R-22 helicopter? Recreational flying constitutes 62% of the fatal accidents which occur in the R-22. Training, 20%. Business flying, 17%. You can see that nearly two-thirds of all the fatal accidents that occur in the R-22 helicopter occur during recreational flying or joyriding. Not because two-thirds of the flying that's being done is recreational flying. Actually, as near as we can determine, there is more flying being done in the training and business area than in the recreational area. But nevertheless, it's in the recreational or joyriding area that we have the vast majority of our fatal accidents. What are the primary causes of fatal accidents in the R-22? Well, number one, way above anything else, collision or flying into wires or other obstacles, 32%. Low RPM rotor stall, 22%. Weather, 14%. And low G mass bumping, 9%. These are the four primary causes of fatal accidents in the R-22 helicopter. Taking a closer look now at what is our number one cause of fatal accidents, collision or flying into wires, these are some of the things that we can do to reduce the chances of having that type of an accident. If you're flying across country and you see power lines off in the distance, Always select a tower which is closest to your proposed flight path and fly directly over the tower. Never fly over the wires. The wires are very difficult to see and even if you do see the wires, you won't be able to judge your height or your distance from them. A good rule to follow is all poles have wires. When making an approach into an area, don't try to decide whether that pole does or does not have wires coming from it. Just automatically make the conclusion that all poles have wires and that there will be wires coming from that pole, either horizontally to another pole or perhaps from that pole down to the ground. Also, all rivers have cables. That also applies to ravines. Again, don't try to decide whether the river is apt to have a cable stretched across it. Just assume that sooner or later, when you fly along that river, you're going to encounter a cable stretched across the river. The same thing would apply in the case of ravines. I recall an accident that occurred down in New Zealand a number of years ago, where a pilot and his shooter were flying in the back country of New Zealand for, to catch live deer, and they were flying up a ravine contacted a cable that was stretched across that ravine. That cable was not even being used for anything. It actually had been abandoned several years before, but they had never taken it down. They struck the cable, they flipped the helicopter down into the stream below, and both men were knocked unconscious. Unfortunately, the pilot was knocked unconscious with his face below the water, and he drowned. The shooter did recover consciousness and survived. Last of all, and probably the most important rule for you to follow, stay above 500 feet AGL. It just so happens that here in the United States, the legal limit defining hazards to air navigation is 500 feet. And any man-made obstacle which is above 500 feet AGL is considered a hazard to air navigation and must be marked or lighted or otherwise permitted. So you can actually eliminate what is by far our number one cause of fatal accidents in the R-22 by just following that one simple rule, always stay above 500 feet AGL. And of course there are also a couple of other very good reasons for using 500 feet as a minimum altitude. One of course, if you're at 500 feet instead of 250 feet, you're going to have twice as much time to react in the event of an emergency and you're going to have four times as great an area from which to select a potential landing site if you had to come down. 
And still a third reason is noise. People on the ground get very irritated with the noise of low-flying helicopters. They go to their city councils, they pass ordinances, they demand that the FAA and other government agencies pass restrictions on where they can land and where we can fly. So if we want to keep the freedom that we have in flying the helicopter where we want, landing pretty much where we want, we're going to have to be better neighbors to the people on the ground. And one of the best ways to do that is to always stay at least 500 feet AGL, and if you're flying over a noise sensitive area, increase it up to 1,000 feet AGL. I would like to show you a video at this time. This particular video was taken in England at a birthday party. The gentleman whose birthday it was had been given as a birthday present a ride in an R-22 helicopter. The two men who owned the helicopter flew to the birthday party and proceeded to give the man his ride in the helicopter. After they had given him his ride, they both then get back into the helicopter and take off to fly back to their home base. the two men had his legs broken, the other man was killed. And that's the way it happens. Everything is happy, everybody's having a good time, and all of a sudden, without any warning, a horrible, tragic accident occurs, and somebody gets killed or seriously injured. Okay, we're going to take a short break at this time, and during the break you can ask any questions that you have. And I would also like to ask you to read safety notices 16, 10, and 24. 